Chapter four is all about triangles and a big part of chapter four is going to be on um, congruence. So before we talk about specifically congruent triangles, let's talk about what it means to be congruent polygons. So polygons are congruent when all the corresponding parts are congruent. Corresponding parts meaning all the sides and all the angles. Go ahead and write that down first. Okay, so if we take a look at um, corresponding parts, look at the example here um, at A, and let's first name these angles, um, name each of these vertices, and we'll talk about how we know uh, if they're congruent and what those corresponding parts are. So let's call this triangle ABC. All right, let's call this other triangle XYZ. So remember, like we said at the very beginning um, of the year, you don't want to assume anything. Just because it looks the same doesn't mean it actually is the same. So the first thing you want to do is be able to tell what are the corresponding parts. So, for example, if I'm looking at the side AB, what side does it actually go with on um, triangle XYZ? Hopefully you're seeing it's actually XZ. And I don't know if it's super clear for you all to see it, but um, if you could measure the angles, it's actually, or measure the sides, you'd get a better idea of which is which. But Z corresponds to B, which is like kind of like that high point. And then going down the shorter side, the shorter side here, Z to X is the same thing as Z to A. Um, all right, so that's your first corresponding side. Then BC correspond to y and then ac will correspond to y all right so you want to be able to identify those corresponding parts um the angles and all that and then when you're writing um your corresponding parts you want to make sure you have them in the right order so for example I don't know these triangles are congruent unless I know the sides match up, right? So I have congruent sides and also congruent angles. So A goes with X, B goes with Z, and then C and Y. So don't get confused with all of my marks. So remember, you're looking for the same number of cat, uh, kind of tags here to see which is which. All right. So if I know that angle A is congruent to angle X, angle B is congruent to angle Z, angle C is congruent to angle Y, and AB is congruent to the corresponding part, so A is in the same position as X. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this XZ, all right? And I know that BC is congruent to, and again, I wanna make sure I'm putting the same um, angles in the same position, so B corresponds to Z. I'm gonna go ahead and call this ZY. Okay, and then finally, AC correspond to XY. Right, we want to be careful. We want to put the parts in the same position here. Um, and what does this mean? If I know these six things here are true with these two triangles, then I can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. Or sorry, did you guys catch my mistake? Not XYZ, it's XZY. Right? because B should go with Z. So this is by definition um, how you know if polygons are congruent. So here, this is definition of congruent polygon. Okay, so same thing true for any polygon. Remember, polygon can have any number of sides and angles as long as it's a closed figure. So if you look at B, um, we would be able to say the same thing. So if I call this shape um, D, E, 
S, G, and this one, N, O, P, Q. How would I know if they, these two quadrilaterals are congruent? Well, you need to know that all the sides and angles are congruent. So, um, I had something like this, right? If I knew that it was a rectangle, which would mean your opposite sides are congruent. And if I could go even further and measure it out and say, well, these are also the same measurement, then I could say that polygon B, E, F, G is congruent to Q, N, O, P. Because again, all sides and angles are congruent. That's an exclamation point. Okay. Um, so that's basically all we're looking at with congruent. So a couple things you want to be able to do. Um, name the corresponding parts of your congruent polygon. And remember what I said earlier, the order of the letters matters. And if it helps you to draw it out, you can always draw it out. So here's my first polygon. And if it starts with D, E, F, G, I'm going to pick, for example, this upper left to start and call this D, E. F, G, then I can go ahead and draw a second polygon, H, I, J, K, but because they are congruent, I want to make sure I start in the same spot. So D I put in the upper left, H I'm going to put in the upper left, and then just go around and name the rest of those vertices, okay? And then you can use the diagram here to name your corresponding parts, um, your sides and angles, or again, look at the position in the names. So since D corresponds to H, those are going to be my corresponding congruent angles, right? E corresponds to I, so those are going to be congruent angles, right? Hopefully you're seeing the picture F and J go together, and then angle G should be congruent to angle K. So those are my congruent angles. What about the sides? And that's where I think the diagram is kind of nice. So just go ahead and pull out your corresponding sides. So DE is in the same position as HI, so they are congruent because again, oops, HI, um, they're congruent because I told you in the in the directions, these are congruent figures, okay? EF, again, same position as IJ, so those are my congruent sides here. GF, on the bottom, in the same place as KJ, noticing I'm very, I'm being particular, putting G with K, right, F and J, because that's where they are in the names, right? I wanna make sure I'm using these um, letters from the original problem. Finally, my last side should be DG and HK, okay? Sometimes I'll ask you to write the congruent statement. Um, don't be confused when it says to write the congruent statement. All you're doing is naming the figure and putting the congruent sign between it. So you can say D, E, F, G is congruent to H, I, J, K. So that's your congruent statement. It's not in this direction, but you'll see it sometimes, so you want to know um, what that means. All right. More interesting, I think, is when we have to solve for things, given the congruent angles and all that. So if you take a look at example two, we're given that triangle ABC, right here, ABC, is congruent to triangle DBC. So here's DBC. So these are two congruent triangles, which tells me all those corresponding angles, angle A and angle D, angle B and angle B, angle C and angle C, um, here are going to be congruent. Of course, I wouldn't name it angle B since we've got a bunch of stuff going on, so it'll be angle ABC and angle DBC that are congruent, right? And what we want to do is we want to use this information to help us find X. So let me erase my highlight since that's kind of in the way. Oops. And let's start solving. All right, so we're going to find the value of X. Um, and then we're going to find the measure of angle DBC. So something you're going to want to do is make sure you know what you're looking for. 
So, of course, I'm looking for X, but what is X a part of? Is X a side or is X an angle? Um, and that's going to help you see what you need to deal with. So here, our X is actually the part of the measure of angle ACB. So what you want to do is you want to look and see, well, how do I figure out what X is, right? Um, well, I know that the measure of angle ACB right here is a linear pair with this 90 degree angle. So that means this should also be 90, all right? You can also see because these are congruent um, triangles, we also know that angle ACB is congruent to angle um, DCB as well. So two ways of seeing that. Again, the linear pair or you've got congruent corresponding angles. Regardless, what you should do with this is say that, well, this angle DB, uh, excuse me, ACB is a 90 degree angle, right? So these are both right angles. So that means 2x minus 16 should equal 90 degrees. All right, then you want to go through and solve. So we're going to get 2x is equal to 106. So that means x should equal 53. All right, how's that going to help me with my work? Well, now part B, I need to find the measure of angle DBC. So let's look and where is angle DBC? DBC is actually this one right up here, right? So the question is, well, if I know this is 90, and I'm trying to find angle DBC, how do I figure that out? Well, remember from the last um, section, we know that all triangles should add up to what number? Right, all triangles should add up to 180. And since these are congruent angles, we know that angle A and angle D are going to be the same. So that means this 49.3, I'll use two here, is going to be the same as this angle so this should also be 49.3. All right, and by my triangle sum theorem, I know all three angles should add up to 180. So that means the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle D, oops, BC plus the measure of angle DCB should equal to 180. And I'm just reminding you what your triangle sum theorem said. So a triangle sum theorem. All three angles in a triangle must always add up to 180 degrees. Then you can go through and substitute. Well, I know angle D is 49.3. I'm looking for the measure of angle DBC. And I know the measure of angle um, DCB is 90 degrees from the diagram. There's my equation. Then just go ahead and solve. So I'm going to combine my like terms and subtract. And that should give me the answer. All right, and there we go. So my final answer should be 40.7 degrees. And remember, you can always just substitute it back in to check, right? 40.7 plus 49.3 plus 90, does that equal 180? It should. If it doesn't, something's off in my algebra. All right, so that's all we're going to do with the video today. We're going to go back and look at the proof together in class because it's going to be a little long because we have to show all six congruent statements. So it's going to be long, but not necessarily difficult. All right, come back to class with questions and see you in class.